You're listening to Shakespeare's Sonnets Exposed, Episode 22, Sonnet 21. What if I say I'm not, not like, like the others? others? What, what if I say I'm not, not just another not one in your place? place? You're the pretender. What if I say I will never, never surrender? Once again, I'd like to thank my patrons for their contributions, and as importantly, for showing faith in a project I've been obsessed with and possessed by for years. If you haven't already, then please sign up to support the graphic novel adaptation at www.patreon.com slash fisherking. Every dollar helps breed a page that brings us closer to a beautiful graphic novel that will make the sonnets so much more accessible. And of course, Ten times that dollar will bring you the finished product ten times faster. Right, let's analyze Sonnet 21. In the Arden Sonnets, it's proposed that this sonnet is inspired by Philip Sidney's Astrophil and Stella, which is entirely likely, and a lot of the commentary surrounds Shakespeare's deliberate use of exaggerated poetic style as a means of making fun of the efforts of other poets. While that certainly sets a snarky tone for Sonnet 21, the narrative doesn't suffer for it. My usual word search through Golding's translation of Ovid's Metamorphosis turned up a few interesting plots from Book 10, and the stories of, please pardon my pronunciations, Cyparissus and Hyacinthus are certainly referenced by a number of Shakespeare's sonnets, whether or not this one does directly. So is it not with me as with that muse, stirred by a painted beauty to his verse, who heaven itself for ornament doth use, and every fair with his fair doth rehearse. Shakespeare is the muse of the sonnets, and his muse would be the conflation of his lost son and the sonnet. Both Shakespeare and the sonnets are painted beauties, Shakespeare being painted or written into the sonnet, and the sonnet being painted by Shakespeare. Once again, fair can mean a number of things, but usually implies to make or made from the French fair, and here makes sense as a reference to the creature creation theme. Rehearse had a few meanings in Shakespeare's day. From the Old French it meant to give an account of, which ties in with a number of established themes, and from the mid-14th century meant to say over again, or repeat what has already been said or written, which is what the sonnets will do for all eternity, or at least as long as there are readers who read them out loud. What's of particular interest to me, however, is that in Old French the word rehearse also meant to rake over or turn over, the former returning us to the husbandry theme, and the latter possibly referring to the turning of the pages as we read. So here in the first quatrain we have Shakespeare declaring that he's not like the poet that inspired him, while ironically contradicting himself. It is possible, however, that so is it not with me might be read instead as literal, not as so is it not the case with me, but rather it does not reside with me, where it might be referring to Shakespeare's or Hamnet's spirit. Making a couplement of proud compare with sun and moon, with earth and sea's rich gems, with April's first-born flowers and all things rare, that heaven's air in this huge rondeur hems. Proud in Old French meant brave, valiant, and in Old English, excellent, splendid, arrogant, haughty. But intriguingly in Latin, prod meant advantageous or profitable. And this resonates with the closing couplet of the sonnet. Compare might still have been understood as regard or treat as equal in addition to its modern day meaning. Gem from sea's rich gems meant a precious stone as it does today and also a rare or excellent example. It may also have been a reference to its Latin root meaning I. If the sonnets are traveling the sea of eternity, they will be in the company of many other great works of art that have survived the ravages of time. The sonnet sequence would be comparable to these other works, and they are most certainly a rare and excellent example of Shakespeare's skill and spirit. The sonnets, as I've mentioned many times before, also serve as Shakespeare's eyes, in context of the overarching narrative of Narcissus and Echo, as reflections of his ego and identity, and as windows into his soul. In the Arden sonnets, it suggested that the air of heaven's air 
may be a pun on air, H-E-I-R, which would be Shakespeare's lost air, Hamnet, and his replacement, the sonnet sequence. Rondure was a fancy way of saying roundness, and heaven's air, hems, which meant to enclose or circumscribe. The first quatrain's rehearsal produces a wonderful couplement in the second quatrain that is comparable to the heavenly bodies, the physical world, our greatest works, the first spring bloom in all its potential, and everything rare that our planet's atmosphere and Shakespeare's sonnet sequence contains. O oh, let me true in love, but truly right, and then believe me, my love is as fair as any mother's child, though not so bright, as those gold candles fixed in heaven's air. Sonnet 130, the famous sonnet beginning, My mistress eyes on nothing like the sun, is referred to in at least two ways by Sonnet 21. And then believe me, my love is as fair, anticipates Sonnet 130's, and yet by heaven I think my love as rare, just as the closing couplets, let them say more that like of hearsay well, ties into, as any she belied with false compare. I noticed that connection before I read through the commentary in the Arden Sonnets. For Catherine Duncan Jones, what connects the two sonnets is the phrase, those gold candles, which is mentioned as a possible allusion to Sidney's identification of the subject of his sonnet sequence as Stella or Star. I believe that there are two ways to read the third quatrain, the traditional way, in which my love is as fair as any mother's child is meaningless because what's being contrasted is a human being to any other human being, or with the idea that the sonnet is the object of Shakespeare's affection, in which case these lines become profoundly changed and Shakespeare is declaring that his love for his embedded reflections is as strong as for any real child, even if they're painted black, even if they're not as bright as Sidney's Stella, even if they're not as bright as the eye more bright from Sonnet 20, Hamnet, who is the golden sun and son of Shakespeare and the sonnet sequence. Let them say more that like of hearsay well. I will not praise that purpose not to sell. Sell was a surprisingly versatile word in the 16th century. While in Shakespeare's day it became the slang for to swindle, it still meant to give lend, supply, and deliver from Old English, and the expression to sell one's soul was a relatively new invention. I mentioned before that the hearsay may be a reference to Sonnet 130's false compare, but I believe there's a lot more to this, particularly because in the original text the word is hyphenated as hearsay, which allows for other interpretations. The them that say more could refer to the sonnets, who appreciate the readers reading aloud or the readers who enjoy the game of reading the sonnets aloud and hearing Shakespeare's words coming out of their own mouths. This closing couplet is traditionally read as, I will not flatter what I don't intend to sell, but with the older meanings of sell and a positive interpretation of the term hearsay, I think we can understand it in a different way. I encourage the readers to keep reading and the sonnets to keep being read, but I will not give praise to anyone sonnet or human, that does not intend to pass on my legacy. While the sonnets have been recognized and adored by scholars and fans the world over, they haven't enjoyed the same kind of mass appeal as his plays, and Shakespeare's intention for his works was always to appeal to a broad cross-section of society. It is my aim to rescue the sonnets from obscurity, from the darkness, and to that end I am producing a graphic novel adaptation, recording this podcast, converting these podcast episodes into a book, and tattooing 154 images representing the sonnets onto my body. Once again, I need your help to make this happen. Please consider signing up to support this project at www.patreon.com slash fisherking. Keep up with the graphic novel progress at sonnetcomics.com and join our community discussions on Reddit at slash r slash sonnetcomics with an X. Thanks for listening. What if I say I'm not, not like, like the others? others? What if I say I'm not just another no. one in your place? You're, You're the pretender. pretender. What if I say I will never surrender? Never.